topic is called chosen and faithful. Called, chosen, and faithful. Praise God. And this is a very important topic for all of us. Not just for the teachers who are here, but for all of us. We are called, we are chosen by God, and we are to be faithful to Him. Praise God. Where's Brother Ricard? You move too fast now. So there's a particular song I want to share for our teachers today as a sense of encouragement. Yes, I'm sure you are all faithful, but I want to encourage you and uh, ask that you reflect on this song. Now this song, I sang it at my graduation to my teachers. And last night as I was looking at the author of this song, I realized that this, teach this person was in education. And so this song is very profound and can resonate with the teachers today, although it is a missionary song and really singing about the living God. Amen? Amen. So send I you to labor unrewarded to serve on pain unloved, unsought unknown to bear rebuke to suffer scorn and suffering so send I you in relation to this topic. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that he should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, and whatsoever he shall ask of the Father in my name, that's the name of Jesus Christ, 
he may give it you. Praise the Lord. So there's three aspects of this theme that I want to zero in on and look at each of them very briefly because time will take it will take a lot of time to go through all three segments. The first one is called. And Isaiah 43 verse 1 says, But now that thou dost say the Lord the, that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. So when we think about that call, it's one that is given by the Father, but it's one where he loves and he cares about us. And he's calling us today from sin, he's calling us to work, and he's calling us to stand right in wherever he has placed us. Hallelujah. So when we think about call, Many times we are thinking about those who are leaders, the pastors, the preachers, the prophets. They are the ones we think are called. But everyone who has surrendered to Jesus Christ, you have been called. No one come to the Father unless the Spirit of the Lord has drawn him or her to the Lord. Hallelujah. And so it's because the Lord has called you why we are a part of this great fellowship. And because the Lord has called us not to be lazy and to sit idle, he has called us to work. And so his command they are given to his disciples is that they should go into all the world and preach the gospel. That call goes for you today. That call goes for me. It doesn't matter if you are an evangelist. By heart, you are called. And everyone who goes, do you go in the name of the Lord? Because it's not by us. It's not by mind, nor by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. So every time that we go, we go in the strength of the Lord. Every time that we go to declare Jesus, we go in his anointing. Because he has called us for a purpose and for a reason. And he wants us to go. Can somebody give him praise? So we are called to be the persons who God has created us to be. We are called to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. Hallelujah. We are called so that we will go and preach and teach and follow the great commission. But we are also gifted, many of us, to do higher level of service. So some of us will serve as pastors. Some are privileged to serve as teachers. Some will serve like prophets. Some will serve in other areas because the Lord has gifted you to serve at that level. Hallelujah. And we must do what we are called to do because the Lord is counting on us. When we think about call, it is a summon. It is, it, it is a summon that we should respond to and do what we are called to do. Praise God. We are also called to be faithful. And we are also called to love each other and to live for the Lord. Praise God. To care for the poor. So as we are called, we, call, we are called for an important responsibility. We are called to serve in various areas. Hallelujah. And I don't want to just single out teachers today because they are here. You must know that you are called as well. And I must know that I am called. So because you are not teacher, it doesn't mean that you get a day off. I want to remind you that you are also called to serve. And the Lord is counting on us to serve well. Hallelujah. So as we look at St. John 15 verse 16, we realize that it comes with an evangelistic responsibility. It is telling us that we must go. And when you go, you are to bear fruit, bring fruit. Praise God. So you are going with a sense of expectation. You are going with a sense of responsibility. You are going because you know that your work is important to the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. And so as we think of it today, we must take this very seriously. Some of us, we doubt ourselves as we approach our various responsibility. We doubt ourselves. But as the Christian teaches,
just in action no that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me bless the Lord so don't operate in your own strength if you're going to go in your own strength I can guarantee you may fail but as you go in the strength of the Lord you shall be victorious and sometimes when you go in the strength of the Lord sometimes you feel like you didn't even accomplish anything but later on you see the results and you know that it wasn't you it was the work of the Lord Sometimes you're speaking to somebody's life and you didn't even have much to say. And you really thought it didn't have an impact on the person. And later on they come and testify how what you, what you said to them, how much it meant. Just a sentence to you, it didn't mean anything. But it had impact on that person's life. It's not about you. It was because of the Holy Spirit working through you. And so we are called to be pliable. We are called to make ourselves available so that the Holy Spirit can use us to his glory and to his honor. Some of us, we run from the call. We hide, we dodge, we find all the excuses so that we don't fulfill our role. But we cannot be successful until we come full circle and do what the Lord has called us to do. You're going to try all that you want to try and do everything else that you want to do but somewhere along the line the Lord is going to wait on you until you come full circle to do what you are called to do you and I must work the works of him who sent us while it's day because what? the night cometh when? no man can work praise God so the call is very important and we need to understand the call and whatever we are doing we must make sure that we do it as unto the Lord. Sometimes as even teachers, we will give a good service. Because the ministry of education treats with us. Our principal is too hard. And the other teachers never fight me. And so we don't give a good account of our stewardship. But God is calling us that whatever we are doing, we do it as unto the Lord. Think about it, that you're not pleasing those around you. You want to please the living God. Because if you are really wanting to please those around you, I can tell you some children won't be appreciative of you. Some of them will cheer you. Some of them will say some unkind things about you. But because you're working as unto the Lord, you will overlook those things and continue to serve and serve well. Somebody give God a clap offering. Bless the Lord. The second era is chosen. And I love this part because it's always good to feel that you are special. We are chosen. Somebody can call you and they mean no good enough. They can call you and they just want to use and abuse you. But when you are chosen, you are really seen in a good light. You are seen as special and important. And that's what we are to the Lord today. Hallelujah. So as Christians, we didn't come into the fellowship independently on our own choice and decision. We came into the fellowship because God has chosen us. Praise God. And sometimes when we think about it, we feel uncomfortable and we think we should be somewhere else in another body. But the Lord has chosen you for this place. For this time and for this season. Sit down in your seats, in your seats and serve well. And when it is time for you to be moved, to move to another level or to move to another location, the Lord will lift you up. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he shall lift you up in due season. Shall we praise his name? So Jesus has chosen us. He did not do it just only choose us, but he has also ordained us. What a privilege we have this morning. He has ordained us. And uh, you know, when we think about it, there is a special anointing that accompanies this choice that God has made towards us. So when we go on the mission field, when we go to do our different roles that the Lord has commanded us to do, or has appointed us to do, or has ordained us to do, we are going with that anointing because he has ordained us for this time and for this work. Praise God. There is also a spiritual blessing that comes with this choosing that God has chosen us. Praise God. So as you serve, you find that you can make impact. As you serve, you realize that there is a 
reward awaiting you. Sometimes as a fellow people we don't feel rewarded by those whom we serve. But I can guarantee you that the Lord has a reward for every man. And he shall pay us according as our work shall be. So continue to work. Continue to press in. Continue to be useful. Continue to be you know, hard working and dedicated. Because this is what the Lord requires of us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't sit down on your talents and your skills. Sometimes we are waiting for others to see and to call us. And say, I think you can sing. You know, come and sing a song. While well, you know you can sing a long time. And could offer yourself so that somebody could be blessed through your ministry. But you sit down waiting until pastor can recognize or call you through the spirit to say, come and share a song. Get up off your seats and give him all of your skills and your talents. Because the Lord has gifted you. He has imparted those skills and talents in you so that you will use them to his glory and to his honor. And the important thing is as you work for him, he rewards you. So we don't just work because we like work or we're work on it. We're working because we know that there is a payday coming. We know that our God is rich in rewards and he wants to reward us today. He doesn't reward laziness. He doesn't reward those who give up easily. He doesn't reward those who run away and hide. He rewards those who are faithful. Hallelujah. When you think in Revelations and the, the, the prophecy that was given, I, I remember the section that says, These are they that have gone through great tribulation. So whatever you're going through, continue to serve and serve well because there is a day coming where you shall be rewarded. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Realize that Jesus, he made the first choice. He made the first choice. You know? And therefore, he invites us to live for him forever. If not call us just for a season and for a time, he calls us for a long-term relationship with us. And so you and I now have to make that second choice. Whether we're going to accept him in all his fullness or we're going to reject him. I challenge someone who don't know Jesus today to accept him before time changes into eternity. And for those who have accepted him, you need to make that choice to do what God has called you to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Without Jesus' choice of choosing us today, we would have no opportunity to make any choice. And the choice uh, that Jesus has uh, you know, required of us today is that we will live as godly people in this present world. God is expecting us for us to choose to be godly. Hallelujah. He's expecting us to be honest. He's expecting us to choose to be truthful. He's expecting us to choose to be our best and to give up our best. He is challenging us to choose to be faithful. Faithful comes by making that choice. Hallelujah. There are so many who have given up. So many who have never started out and to do what they are called to do. So those who are now on the journey, you have to make that choice that you're going to be faithful. Faithful to the very end. Hallelujah. There are many people who die full because what? They have not given up themselves. They refuse to be faithful. They refuse to serve. But God is calling us today that we will be counted faithful. Hallelujah. There are many who rejected the call. There are many who are giving shabby service. That's not faithfulness. That are just occupying until. Hallelujah. And there are others who are watching what others are doing. And because they are busy watching, they end up doing nothing else. But God is counting on us today to be faithful. Stop looking at what others are doing and be mindful of your work. And make sure you work and do as unto the Lord. There is a day of reckoning coming. Hallelujah. And God expects us to be faithful. Hallelujah. As we remain faithful, we're going to receive the reward. So continue to be faithful. When we think about faithfulness, 
It comes with a sense of selflessness. Hallelujah. Big responsibility to the faithful, you know. It comes with a determination. It comes with a push that you need when every signal is saying, stop and don't bother. And everybody else around you are stopping and can't bother. You are still pushing on. That's what faithfulness is. Hallelujah. It also calls for a willingness to honor God. So sometimes you don't even want to do it. But you know that God has given you this opportunity and you count it with a sense of responsibility so you continue to serve and continue to give. So as Christians, let us respond to the call positively. And say, friends, respond to the call positively because God continues to call us. You know? He's calling those out of sin and he's calling those who are, who are now redeemed, he's calling you to another level. He don't want to stay just at saving station. He wants us to go and to do. So respond to the call positively. The call to serve and the call to bear fruit. Praise God. And be reminded today that you didn't choose yourself. God has chosen you. So in honor to him, we must go and bear fruit. We must do what we are called to do because the Lord has chosen us. He favors us. He, we are special to him today. There are so many out there who don't know Jesus. But you've got this opportunity to serve him. Serve him and serve him well. Let us be faithful and endure to the end. Because as we remain fruitful, we will have this opportunity to ask of the Lord whatever we need. Whatever we want of him through Jesus Christ's name. And God will give it to us today. Hallelujah. 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 So in closing this morning, or this afternoon now, I want to really applaud the Christian teachers in action. Not just for being at Modern Church today, but for the important role that you serve in this educational sector and in our country. Give a round of applause for them one more time. Hallelujah. We realize that many teachers are running away. Seeking better opportunity. And sometimes when you really think about yourself, some of you would have done the same. But because you are called and you are chosen and you want to be faithful, you stand among the few that remain. And as you remain and as you continue to serve, I declare that God will continue to bless you and prosper you and open up the windows of heaven and pour out into your life that you won't have room in you have come and as you have you know, joined forces with us to worship God, this, there's an affirmation that you count your role in this nation as a responsible uh, uh, um, thing for you and for your, your you know, in, in the service that you give to education. Remember, you're already teachers and the government pay you to be teachers, although they pay so little. You're paid to be teachers, but you go beyond that to voluntarily give up yourself so that other teachers can have the covering of God over their life. That children can have the coverage because well, you are a praying set of people. You are a people who are of faith and you believe that things can change as you tap into God. And you do all of this voluntarily. But remember the Lord has chosen you. And you didn't just get into the movement and do it all by yourself. The Lord has chosen you and he has gifted you. And I believe he's going to continue to use you in more ways than one as you open up to him today. Hallelujah. When we think about it, the expectations are very great. Sometimes the people who we serve them set higher expectations out of us. More than what we said for ourselves. You're just giving voluntarily, you know. So you know how much you can give. But even though you know you can give so much, there are those who expect much more out of you. And they're not paying you. But God will reward you for your faithfulness. So continue to persevere. Continue to stick to the task. Yes, and I pray a special blessing upon uh, Pastor Norman as she continues to keep the body together. Hallelujah! Because our nation need God and our nation need prayer. Our schools need God's 
intervention. And so I'm glad that there is a body of people who are standing in the gap and representing God in this nation on behalf of the education sector. Hallelujah. You are called. You are called to be faithful. Hallelujah. And we must realize that God is able to do great things in our lives. Remember that he who has called you, he is also faithful. That's the important thing. So God is calling us to faithfulness, but he himself is faithful. Sometimes people call you to do some things, but they are not doing what they have called you to do. They will never do it. I'll give you an example. Somebody will call you to clean the bathroom, but if you ask them to do it, they're not going to do it. They may clean their own but not somebody else's. But they will call you Nick and Carter for you to come and do it. And because you're a good sweat, don't you know you do it? Yes. But when we think about it today, oh my God is not like that. Calling us to something that he does not like and experience in, that he doesn't believe in. He's calling us to faithfulness because he is a faithful God. Hallelujah. And he can do for us what no other powers can do. He's an almighty God, all powerful, omniscient God. We need to trust him today and allow him to lead our way. As we embark on this new academic year, I can say to the teachers that the challenges may be great. Already Reverend John pray against those. The challenges may be great, but just remember that you are called for such a time. Remember that you have the capacity to serve and to stand in the gap. So when all else is failing, remember that Jesus is your hope and stay. And on Christ, the solid rock, you can stand. And all other ground is a sinking sand. You must remain, remind, be reminded that you are ordained to serve and to be fruitful. You are ordained to serve and to be fruitful. And what I like is that God is our source today. Whatever we're going through, God is our source today. So once we continue to be faithful and do as we are called to do, we can ask of the Father anything that we want today through Jesus Christ. And the Father will give, give it to us today because he is a faithful God. And be faithful to the end. And in be faithful, be reminded of the song, So Said I You. It speaks to so much issue that if you really want to be faithful, you have to understand what faithfulness comes with. Yes, man, sometimes it comes with insult. Sometimes it comes with a little bit of pain. Yeah, a little bit of pain. Sometimes it comes with no thank you, no respect, no honor. And sometimes those who not do anything and then you see a platform and get awards. And you are there working hard. Nobody recognizes you. But that's what faithfulness comes with. Don't give up. Continue to press on. You see the God who we serve is a faithful God. And he sees and he knows. And he, will, he may not reward you now. But there is a day where he will reward you. Sometimes uh, when you didn't expect it. You get an open reward. Because he is such a God. And there is a final day coming where he's going to reward everyone. So let us work for that time. As you remain faithful to the faithful God, we must remember that these rewards are sure. His payback is sure. So continue to work. What some writer says, faithful, faithful, faithful is our God. I'm reaping the harvest God's promised me. Take back what the devil stole from me and I rejoice today for I shall recover it all. With God today be faithful you can recover everything that you have lost. With God be faithful you can reap the harvest even when it seems like there is a drought because he's a God who is a God of abundance. Praise God. And so I challenge us to trust in him today. Don't give up. Press on. Remember that the reward, uh, there's a reward for you being faithful. And God is depending on you. You shall reap if you faint not. You shall reap if you faint not. So the, the, the theme is for the Christian teachers in action. 
as they go through this special week of really summoning God and seeking his intervention as they embark on the new year. But what about you today? Do you, do you, do you hear the call of God? Have you responded to the call? Hallelujah. Do you know that you are special and you were chosen by God today? And for those who you know the call, you know that you are chosen. Are you really faithful? And will you be faithful to the very end? God is counting on us today. God is counting on us. If you have not yet surrendered to the Lord and you keep coming each Sunday, it will look like you're faithful, but that's not faithfulness. Faithfulness is when you have surrendered to the Lord and do what he calls you to do. He says we are to go and bring forth fruit. So like Sister uh, Miss Andrew, as you come each week, we're happy to see you. But we're calling you to real faithfulness. Not the faithfulness that you think that you come every week, you are faithful. We are calling you to the faithfulness where you serve the living God and be counted among those who shall reign with him. Hallelujah. Simone, you keep on coming. But that's not the faithfulness we're calling you to. We're calling you to a life of obedience to the word of God. And where you give God your all and allow him to use you to his glory and honor. Nicola, Ryman, Allen, good to see you in the house of the Lord. You want to walk with God. But today is the day where you can get back to basics with the Lord. And say, Lord, I want to be faithful. I want to, I want to go with you. I want you to lead me. Lead me, Lord, and I will follow. Sister Campbell, as you go through this time, just remember that God is faithful. God is faithful, and he will stand with you in your midnight season, in your lonely season, because he's a faithful God. I pray his comfort upon you today. I pray his strength upon you today. I pray that in this season you will not lose your mind, but you will keep your focus on the living God and trust only in him so that he can bring you out. I put everyone before the Lord today and I'm calling you to respond to the call, to remember that you are chosen. God is still calling us because we are special to him and he's calling us to be faithful. Sometimes we get discouraged Sometimes we really want to throw in the towel. But God is calling you to come up higher and remain faithful. Because as we do what we are called to do, in return you shall be blessed. God bless you today. As you will be reminded that you are called, you are chosen, and you are to be faithful to the living God. Amen.